Hello class. Today I'm going to walk you through the procedure for determining the Kirpin climate classifications for your six cities. Uh, as part of the assignment, uh, I guess it's assignment seven, U.S. City Climate Graphs and Kirpin Climate Classification Mapping Assignment. Uh, you will do this assignment, you will complete this assignment as individuals. So again, each one of you will create climate graphs and complete this entire assignment for all six cities. Okay, each, each of you will do all six cities individually. Uh, however, after you compile the data through this assignment, when you come back together for the group project, you should be able to use the data you collected here for that project. Uh, you can either take whoever has the best data and use it or some combination uh, therein. Okay, so the first part of the assignment is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Here are the six cities, San Francisco, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, Denver, Colorado, Indianapolis, Indiana, Nashville, Tennessee, and Norfolk, Virginia. If you remember, we chose those six cities because they are pretty close in terms of la their latitude. Uh, so the assumption is cities at the same latitude should have approximately the same climate. But as we will see through this exercise and through the course of your term paper, uh, that is not the case. That is, these cities will not have similar climates. They will have climates that, are, that vary significantly in some cases. Uh, so the first objective is to get data from the weatherbase.com site and I've spelled out how to do that pretty um, thoroughly here. Now also included with the um, assignment instructions is this Excel spreadsheet. So when you get the data, this I'll just use Baltimore as an example. And so you just have to transfer the data from the weather base site directly into this spreadsheet, exactly as you see here. So here's the degrees Fahrenheit data for Baltimore, and then the annual amount. And, and then here is inches for each month from the weather base site for Baltimore. And then you will take the inches of precipitation, degrees Fahrenheit, and when you type the data into this portion of the spreadsheet, it will automatically populate the climate graph, okay? And then you simply go select here, go to layout, and then you type in your chart title for each city. Um, and in that way you will have your chart title for each city. Uh, notice that the spreadsheet has templates for all six cities, okay? So once you have filled out this template, you'll have your data stored and your climate graphs also for each city if you need any help with this portion, let me know. This should be pretty straightforward as laid out in the instructions. Okay, so that brings us to step through four, which is determining the Kirpin climate classification for each city. So I'm gonna walk you through the process for Baltimore. So if you notice, there are three three um, PDFs, uh, we'll go to the third one, uh, number three, which has the instructions. So there is this five step process for determining whether or not you're determining the three letter Kirpin climate classification 
uh, for your city or each city, okay? I'm gonna do it for Baltimore now. So here we go to step one. First, we must determine if there's a seasonal concentration of precipitation. If a seasonal concentration occurs when 70% of the annual rainfall occurs either from April to September or October to March. So let's go back to our data. So here are the precipitation data for Baltimore, Maryland. Now, if I add the precipitation data for April through September, uh, I will wind up with 22.6 inches of precipitation. Baltimore's average precipitation is 42 inches. So clearly uh, that is not greater than 70%. So we can conclude uh, immediately that we have an even distribution of precipitation for Baltimore. Now, uh, as you work through the these five steps, you need to write out in parenthetical form, not in some kind of shorthand, exactly the process that you went through to determine each step, okay? That's what you have to turn in. It can be on a separate Word document. Does it have to be in this great of detail? No, but it should, I should be able to logically follow what you've done to determine the precipitation distribution, or not just me, anybody. Okay, anybody should be able to follow your instructions. In science, your instructions should, are meant to be replicable. That means that somebody else can take what you did at your methodology section and um, basically replicate what you've done. Okay, so when you're writing down these instruct, writing down the methodology, keep that in mind. Could somebody else read this and replicate this methodology? or come to the same uh, conclusions that I did. So no shorthand, it has to be very thorough. Okay, so step one, we've determined that Baltimore has an even distribution of precipitation, uh, which brings us to sheet one. Notice on sheet one, there are three graphs. We know that our graph for Baltimore showed that we have an even distribution of precipitation, so we'll use this graph. We had a summer concentration, we'd use this graph. If we had a winter concentration, we'd use this graph. So what's the purpose of this graph? Here is where we're gonna determine whether or not we have a, a humid or moist or dry climate for this particular location. So let's go to, to the um, first graph. Inches of mean annual precipitation are here in the um, top axis, which can extend beyond the borders of the graph. So if we keep going, 42 inches is gonna be about right here. Uh, then of course, conversely, our temperature average was 57 degrees Fahrenheit. So our intersect point is here which is clearly within the A, C, D, or E, or humid climate uh, class. Uh, so we know that our climate for Baltimore will either start with A, C, D, or E. Okay, what about E? Is the warmest month for Baltimore less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, if we look at our, at our data, we would know right away that that is not the truth. Uh, our warmest month is clearly greater than um, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So therefore we know that the first letter, uh, or excuse me, the first warmest month less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, we know that it's not E, we do not have a polar climate here. We know we don't have a B climate, we've already eliminated that. Uh, what about A? Is the cold, coolest month greater than uh, 64 degrees Fahrenheit? The coolest month. So here the coolest month is January, 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, clearly that is um, 
not greater than 64 degrees Fahrenheit. So we know that we do not have an A climate, which takes us over to sheet two. And so for sheet two is the first letter C is the coldest month between 64 degrees Fahrenheit and 32 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, yes, it is. Is there at least one month over 50 degrees Fahrenheit? Yes. So we know that the first letter uh, is C, in this case, a mesothermal climate C. First letter is C. Uh, so that takes us to step four. So we know that Baltimore has a C climate. What is the second letter? Is it W or F? Um, is it W or F? And so as you can see, uh, W is a dry winter. And F is always moist, okay? Uh, so is it a dry winter, the dr which means the driest month in the winter half of the year has to have less than one-tenth of the wettest summer month. So let's go to our data. The driest month in the winter half of the year, which is January, through March and October through November. The driest month in the winter half of the year uh, can be either uh, February or I'm going to format these cells so that we have more numbers behind the decimal, at least one. Okay, so for those months, any of those months is three inches. Is that less than one tenth of the wettest summer month? Uh, no, the wettest summer month is only is August with 4.4 .4 inches of precipitation. Clearly that is not true. So that means that the second letter has to be F. So, so far we have Baltimore with a CF climate, uh, all with F meaning always moist. And then last but certainly not least uh, is the third letter A is the warmest month above 71.6 degrees Fahrenheit on average. Uh, yes, that is true. We have several months higher than that. So the three letter Kirpin classification for Baltimore, Maryland is CFA, uh, CFA, um, which can be subtropical, always moist, warm summer, could be the, uh, the long title for that. You should also um, write that out. So that is how you would determine the Kirping climate classification for each city. Uh, you will use, employ this five step process. This process again must be uh, written out uh, for each city, okay? Uh, you have five steps, you can be on a set in a separate Word document. Uh, and so at the end of the assignment, where it asks you, you know, what to turn in, uh, where it says in a Word, Word document with the calculation you use to determine your city's current climate classifications, that's where you put those five, that's those five steps that I'm talking about. Again, if you have any questions about how to determine the current climate classification for each of your cities, uh, please uh, let me know.